Hey team, Kira here from Pencil and Paper. I'd like to share a bit of a how-to on the data tables UX checklist. So we tried to make it as to the point as possible. The idea is you can go through all of the criteria and figure out at a high level if you're really crushing it in your table's experience or if maybe you're botching it a little bit on some different things. So you're gonna put your reflection glasses on and have a long, hard look at your data tables experience. Okay, let's dive in. So to kind of prime us and get us into the zone here, I wanna take a sec to share with you some common issues with data tables. These are some top whoopsie doos that we see pretty regularly working on a whole bunch of different enterprise products. Number one, defaults don't make sense to the persona who's using the table. An example here is that you've got a software product and basically every single persona uses the same exact view. So there's like columns that are showing or just the general state isn't necessarily considered for that specific persona involved. Number two, too much information presented by default. So if you're catering to people who aren't that big into data, giving them like an onslaught of kind of everything totally unfiltered, uncurated, it's sort of all the things and, and you have a mentality of like more is better. It's not actually true, more is not better. And I know this because I have personally scared data analysts with my designs before. So I know that just because someone's a power user does not mean that they wanna see absolutely everything and just have like a wall of data thrown at them. Number three, too many or too few actions are available. So for example, you could have a situation where you have like 10,000 screens and you can execute like one or two actions on them. So you have a whole bunch of actions sort of like distributed across screens, which is a little bit funky. Or you might have a screen that just has everything in it and it has like just a, a world of icons coming at you. Like, and they seem like they are of equal importance. So that's also a no-go. Finally, the fourth big problem that people often have with tables is that the viewing controls are falling a bit flat. So in a lot of tables, you actually can't change the view. You can't change the density. You can't really do anything with it. And a lot of people need that. It's really hard to design perfectly for every single persona and all the diversity of preferences and work styles and companies and all of that. So when people don't have any control, over how the table is viewed, then the experience is a little bit subpar. So we can definitely do better than that and create a nicer data table experience that's more considered and more specialized to the people who are using them. Okay, so what makes a successful data table experience? There's some key things that you wanna be able to deliver. I obviously can't be naming every single thing that makes an amazing data table experience. I would love to just sound off all day on this, but we put together some biggies for you to think about. Number one, the data table experience strikes the right balance between information presented and actions available. Number two, it looks friendly, not overwhelming or intimidating or subject to misinterpretation. So this is subjective. These user groups are so diverse and different. They have different tolerances for the amount of data they wanna see or the type of data that they wanna see. Everybody has their limits though to kind of d data density and the, the pace at which you get to a state where you see so much stuff. The worst thing that you can do in a data table is to present data in a way that might be misleading. So that is something that's really important because trust of the data source is also central to a great data table experience. Number three, the default state when you load initially makes sense for the persona and the use case. So no one data table will likely be really useful for a medical admin and a bookkeeper and a doctor and a pathologist and an IT admin. Like these are not super likely that there's gonna be a ton of perfect overlap between these kind of roles. Number four, performance. A data table needs to load like a champ. If that's not in place, like it's going super slow. People are trying to look at data here. So uh, that is like super central to making a, a great data table experience. So don't forget to collaborate with developers and make sure that you can deliver some good performance and figure out how to do that. So these are a few biggies to consider when you're trying to make a great data table experience. If you can get some of these in play, 
you're gonna be in pretty good shape. So when you're working on a data table experience, you're often like, oh man, I just wanna fix this whole thing. I just wanna make it an awesome experience. I can see all of these opportunities to fix things and to optimize, but record scratch, you probably can't build everything. You can't integrate all of your amazing ideas. And so there's always this game of prioritizing design effort and dev effort, because every single new feature or aspect of the table that you introduce needs to be developed, QA'd. You probably need to put different data, QA data sets into the table and see how it works. Like there's, there's so much around all of that. And so prioritization is super important. You can't compare every single data experience like apples to apples. Not every single data experience should be like Excel or should be like Airtable or should be, you know, so refined around a really specific set of features. They have really different purposes and different meanings behind all of those types of features. So what we've done if, is we've put together just a loose kind of categorization of these kind of table experiences so that you can use that as a framework to prioritize stuff that seems more important than other stuff. And so what we've, we've looked at and we've seen across all these different enterprise software products is that there are some trends. There actually are ways to categorize different table experiences. Let's kick off with an action-oriented table. So these really emphasize actions, executing stuff, doing things. It's more kind of tangible, or you might wanna grab things a little bit more on a data table experience like that. You're not necessarily diving into the data and all the nuances and trying to find stuff. You're actually executing your daily work. So an example of this would be like a billing page on a practice management software. Maybe people have a queue. It's almost a bit more like a list than it is a table in a way. You're just trying to verify a couple pieces of information and then, you know, hit as build or send the bill, complete the transaction, something like that. So you're kind of going through systematically and making something happen. Another example might be something where you're in a table view and you're categorizing or making decisions on each of the rows. And so that could be something where it's super action oriented. Maybe you're grouping things, maybe you're categorizing rows, who knows? But the point is, is that you're in there and you're executing actions, maybe several different kinds of actions, primary and secondary. And so you want to be thinking a lot about the interaction design type of stuff that is surrounding those tables. The next one is information-oriented tables and table experiences. This emphasizes the use cases around comparing and parsing, looking at data. So maybe you're looking at a complex data set, like a manufacturing data set, let's say. They're really big. They have tons of columns, wrote like everything. They're pretty complicated, pretty huge. And you're trying to figure out, okay, comparing two different factories and one has quality issues and one doesn't, like what are the main differences between them? Let's say something like that. These kind of information seeking experiences or information oriented experiences is where you really have to think about the visual experience as well as any kind of features that are centered around filtering and searching and finding within your table. People might be looking to, to glance and compare between rows compare between columns. They might be trying to whittle down to a specific list. They might not be trying to remove anything and they're just trying to like highlight certain things and sort and filter, you know, all of that kind of thing. So this is really where people are, they're almost directly interfacing with the database. It's kind of an interesting way to think about that. Number three, you have a super user table. It's kind of both. <laughs> it's like an action oriented table, an inf information oriented table coming together to make a super user baby. So basically you want to be parsing through a ton of different information and executing action. So you're going deeper into kind of analysis as well as making stuff happen. You could also call this the granddaddy of all tables. Something like, let's say you have a practice management tool and you've got billing information, insurance information, how long the patient's been there, how many bills they've had, like you have just this huge amount of data and you can process multiple actions in there. So you need kind of a level of sophistication and nuance that you might not really need with more utilitarian or more basic types of table experiences. So 
There's lots of nuances in there between these types of tables, but we do see them as a, a useful way to kind of categorize in order to do some prioritization and figure out what's important. So now we're getting into the UX checklist. Like what are the standards for a data table experience? There are some actually. There is not just, you know, art and magic coming out of what stuff we're designing on a daily basis. There are some standards that we can actually look at and we can assess what the quality of the experience is. So we've identified some really top level things in a bunch of different categories. So the page shell or structure, information architecture, data table, or, sorry, table data, table actions, visual hierarchy and aesthetics, information seeking experiences and mobile. So that's kind of how we chopped everything up. So I'm gonna go through each of the sections talk through those questions. And for the ones that aren't super self-evident, I'll explain a little bit more. All right, here we go. Page shell, page shell, page shell. Okay, this is the page itself. It's all the stuff surrounding the like actual data table experience. So for the page shell, we just wanna hit some, some real basics on the experience to kick us off. There's a ton of design and tech debt in these enterprise products. And so we need to kind of like see a little bit of a baseline going in. These high level standards apply to everything that's kind of around the data table itself. So is it clear what the page is about? Even if you arrived at this page directly and didn't navigate to it, is there like a title on the page? Is there no title? Is it weird? Basically like, do you even know where you are? Is the first question. Is it clear what the most important action is even before the user has interacted with the page? So if it is something where you know, there's a delete button or a, I don't know, send to somebody or whatever it is. Is that apparent? Is the most important button indicated as the most important? Is there a default state assigned for different personas? Or does everybody get the same view and hope for the best? Don't know. Will a user who's confused or stuck be able to find information or context on what to do next? So they've landed at this table and they're like, huh? Is there something that will take them forward. So that's the essence of what page shell is all about. Just high level standards on a data table experience. All data tables need great information architecture. After all, what is a table if not information? Information architecture is super important for this kind of experience. But just to be clear, we're going to talk later about like the data itself. And we're going to talk about the information architecture in this section here. So this is the way the table is built and organized. So does the title of the page itself make sense universally? Is there branded language or weird things in there? Do you understand what the table is about by default and using language that like a person can understand? Are the verbs used for the actions that are presented universal and kind of follow this pattern of vocabulary that we have out there like export, save, remove, archive, those kind of things. Like does it fall into that category or are you making up some fun new words or maybe some super old school words. Are the column headers, like the titles of, of the columns going across, universally understandable? Is there anything about them that could be misinterpreted or confused? Or are they like the, the pure human unreadable version of what they are in the database? Those kind of things, like how are those column headers looking? Because that's a big part of how you orient yourself in a table. Are there obscure or niche column headers? Are they described with tooltips or any other way to understand what they are? So if you have an acronym, let's say for something, customer lifetime value or something like that, and it's abbreviated to like a really small abbreviation, do people know what that is? Is there a way to find out some kind of mapping or some kind of tooltip or something? Table data, kind of important in a data table. So let's kind of think about like the stuff that's actually in your cells in that data table experience. So I wanna nag you about defaults cause that's what I love. So are 50% of the columns shown by default relevant to the personas looking at the page? Does the order of the data make sense? Like, is it intuitive? Are you kind of listing things out in a literal way according to the database? but it doesn't actually intuitively make sense because it doesn't follow like a hierarchy that would make sense to a person. Here we also get into a little bit of stuff around data quality too. So are the values under each column unique? Do you have duplication? Do you have redundancy? Is there just any like 
yucky bits in there that you don't actually need to have presented to people. They might just be pulling focus from what's important. Okay, the values in your table. So do the actual values in the table tell a cohesive story? Is the data making sense? This again comes like to some data quality stuff, right? But like, that's the question. <laughs> How are long values handled? Are they handled? Are you truncating stuff? Are you putting, you know, kind of shortened versions of things into like an acronym or some kind of shortened form of a longer word? Stuff like that. Are system generated values explained with a tooltip? So if you have anything kind of system generated or randomly generated, things like that, if they have meaning behind them, if there is a system to how things are, are generated, are you explaining that somewhere? Because people will kind of sit there, struggle, and just wonder like, what is this thing for a little bit too long? So in a nutshell, that's a bit about the actual data in the table itself. There's so much more <laughs> to say there, but those are kind of like really top ones that can get you thinking about data quality and just the actual values that are presented to people. Table actions are important to a data table. Yes, they are. Performing actions on a table or on the rows within a table. This is actually a pretty nuanced thing and needs to be done well too. So again, let's start with a little bit of hierarchy here. Are the most important actions emphasized in some way or um, styled in a certain way compared to like secondary actions or things that are less important? Are the most prominent actions clearly connected to the purpose of the page? Or is there like a continuity weird thing there where you have like a button that doesn't have to do with the purpose of the page? Say again, we have a practice management tool and you have a patient billing page that has like add a clinical note at the very top, you know, things like that. Are the default decisions within the table as useful as they could be, like is the sorting logic making sense, column visibility, all of that kind of thing. Is there a way to efficiently execute batch actions, i.e. multi-select or keyboard shortcuts? Is there any kind of optimization in like executing an interaction quicker? If inline editing is relevant, are there affordances indicating edit capability or like hover states or things like that or your little pencil. Do inputs for editing have distinct and communicative states like errors, complete, etc. So that's a bit about performing actions on a table and how you can assess their importance or and how you can assess how well you're doing in the experience that you're creating around table actions. Visual hierarchy, spacing and aesthetics. So how do visuals help people parse and convey, understand information, that's kind of important. So if you squint your eyes and you look at the table, are the things that you expect to be the most prominent, the most prominent? That's like the visual hierarchy test, right? Are things kind of like making your, your eyeball go across them in a way that is intuitive to kind of learning or understanding a table? Overall, is the table free of overlapping text? You can't be overlapping text or doing some really egregious mistakes like that in a d any data table, regardless of what kind it is. Is there anything to visually differentiate the row you're focusing on, like a hover state or a zebra print? Is there any kind of easing that you're doing for people to be kind of parsing through and c doing comparisons this way and that way? Are actions visually distinct from static information? Sometimes they blend right in and you can't actually tell what's information versus what's an action. Are values represented in the most easily scannable way possible? So have you used any of the tricks that you can use to ease the viewer a little bit? Like give them a couple clues on what that type of information is, like avatars, icons, badges, like things like that. Is there any kind of like comedy relief, but like visual relief in your data table? So visuals, like how it looks is actually so important to its utility. Visual hierarchy, spacing, and aesthetics are a key part of a data table experience. Information seeking experiences, filtering, searching, and sorting within large data sets. So this is like finding information, comparing across things, like filtering all of that. First off, can you filter the information in the table? Can you add and remove columns? Can you reorder columns? Can you sort values within a column? Is searching within a table available? Is there a visual indicator that indicates which values match the search or filter criteria applied? 
like system status type of stuff. When the user leaves and returns to the table, is their view sustained within a session? Can users save the layout they've customized? Can users search keywords across the entire page and find key information? So this is really like the, the, the seeking out information and, and trying to find an answer sort of use case. So these are really key things for delivering that kind of experience. Mobile. Let's not forget about mobile, even though we often want to with data tables. <laughs> data tables and mobile are is like a, a real thing. So here are some, some key criteria for mobile experiences. Is the, the table responsive? Is density adapted so that targets are larger and easier to interact with? Is the data table shown centered around relevant mobile use cases? If any functionality has been removed, is there an alternative way for people to execute the same action? like switch to landscape, edit in a modal, things like that. Okay, so now we're on to scoring your results and figuring out kind of at a high level, how are you doing? Are you doing great? Is it a little bit of a needs improvement situation? When you score your results, we framed it in a way around action-oriented, information-oriented, and like the super user slash both use case here. So for action-oriented experiences, you really want to be able to have high scores on the page shell section and the table actions are super, super important. So efficiency is of the utmost important for this type of table view. If there are problems in these kinds of areas, you'll want to prioritize those real quick. For information-oriented tables, we have a few key sections in here. Information architecture, table data, visual hierarchy, information seeking experiences. In these sections, we want to score high and like have most of these as a yes. So the priority for information oriented experiences is that there's clearly understood visual hierarchy and relevant data that makes information easy to parse. If there are problems in viewing the information, this is critical. Like it's a pretty inf in like super important moment, like nah, buzz, like fix it pretty quick if you can. And then finally, with our super user tables, all sections need to be strong <laughs> with such a mega data table experience. Not only do users need to easily parse and dive into information, they also need to execute a lot of potential complex flows. So a good experience requires all the functionality above to come together clearly and cohesively with all of those like key interaction triggers and stuff like that. If any of the sections is failing, the whole experience is impacted. And although this like more of a user, a super user type of persona using this stuff, they probably will figure out like weird workarounds or things like that. They're potentially doing a lot more volume of thing. It may be more complicated. The stakes may be higher. So it's really important that these are pretty sophisticated types of experiences. So I hope that this checklist helps you and gives you a little bit of like an orientation on like quality metrics for data tables and also a way to prioritize what you're doing and be able to deliver a better data table experience. Speaking of data table experiences, we are running a live data tables masterclass on July 11th. Fanny and myself will be presenting, going through all of the examples and the details in our article as well as this checklist and a whole bunch of bonus content. And we are gonna like just dive deep into this topic live with you. You'll be able to ask questions, stick around, ask some questions, get even nerdier after the fact you can get the recording. And we'll also answer some questions that we're not, that we didn't get to potentially during the live event. And so you can always be like checking back there and submitting questions, things like that. So join us July 11th for our data tables masterclass. It's gonna be lit, just saying.